you. Let's turn to our Bible. We read from the book of John. Chapter 6. Read from verse 28 to 29. Wise and prudent, and has revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. Let us pray. Lord God, we have again humbled ourselves before you, Lord. And we have assembled ourselves. We've come from far and wide because we expect to meet with you, Lord. We have not come, Father, Lord, to grace the feet of a man. But we have come to meet with the one who created the heavens and earth. We have different problems. We have different needs, Lord. But we believe that you can supply our needs, Lord. If not, we would not have come here, Father, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, Lord, may we not be disappointed, Lord. Give us see the move of God. Yes, Lord. But you choose to use the vessel of a human being, Father. Lord God, may you be seen and not a man. As we go, Father, Lord God, into prayers, teach us how to pray, Father. That when we go here, we want to see a reality of God. We don't want to hear the text, oh God, too much of the text. But we want to see the spirit moving among us, Lord. Help us, Lord Jesus, and let us achieve this goal. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right. Uh, today, our title is The Message of the Hour. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, we know that God is always trying to reveal himself to his people. And we know that God, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And so, God is his own word. Amen? And so, God being his word, he has lotted his word to every age. That means he has divided a portion of his word to every age. And we as Christians, we are obligated to be Christ-like. And the only way you can be Christ-like is if you receive the word of God. That is his seed into you. Amen? And so, God himself, it pleased him to always reveal himself to his people. And he doesn't just reveal himself just for revealing sake. God reveals himself to the people. And every time he does that, he lays down the word for the people. And the reason God does that, that every time he reveals himself, he lays down the word is because he wants the believers to be like him. And it's the word that has the power to transform you. To be like Jesus Christ. Because you were born in sin, shaped in Christ, as Brother Brown would quote. But God has a way to animal. Days before that, they were cowards, hiding somewhere, unable to preach the word of God, fearing death. But after then, there was a change in their life. There was a change in their behavior. They were not the same people that they were, but they were a different kind. They were like Christ, amen, because they followed, they laid down instructions by God for their day, amen. And so we see that, we see example and we have to lay emphasis that at Antioch a few days after that, the people called them Christians. Now, emphasis must be laid that they were not called Christians because they talked about Jesus Christ. But they were called Christians because they acted like Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. A quote here from Brother Abraham. Not that one. All right. A quote from Brother Abraham here. The token. Token, I mean. 630901M. Notice 251, paragraph 251. Notice they will not just yet come together to talk about the message. They come together to apply the blood, to apply the token. That's what you must do, Pastor Neville, and to this congregation, trustees, deacons, to you, brethren. It's time that we laid aside all the foolishness of the world. Time we laid aside everything else. We've seen enough now till we are positive, sure, and the token must be applied 
Without it, you are going to perish. You must perish. That's the only thing. Oh, don't come together and say, I believe it. Get beneath it. Get into it. How do you, how do, you do it? By one spirit, we are baptized into the body of Jesus Christ. Everybody believe with all your heart. See, he was not responsible for any out from beneath it. Amen? Now, we have the word of God in print. Or if we could take it further, God in print form. This is God because God is his word. And in here lays how God revealed himself to the past generations, the past ages. And how he is going to reveal himself in this age. And the only way to walk in the right way is to follow the instructions of God for your own age. Now, what we are trying to say is that in the days of Noah, if you did not enter into the ark, you will not be saved. But that does not tell us that in our own day, we must build another ark. Because if you try that, you will be failing. Because that is not the word that has been allocated to us in our age. That was the portion of the word given to Noah's age. In other words, that was the revelation of Jesus Christ in Noah's age. Amen? A quote again from Abraham. I think I'll read a lot of quotes tonight. For Jesus himself is the interpretation of the Bible. When he's made manifest in the age that the part of his body is being made manifest. If it's a hand age, 60. 50822 M. Um. Oh, okay. I did not give the paragraph, sorry. In the age that the part of this body is being made manifest, if it's a hand age, it must be a hand. It can't be a head age. If it's a voice age, well, then it can't be a foot age. And now we are at the eye age. And now the next is him, himself, to come. Seeing prophetic. Amen? And so, for us to do the right thing, we must find out the path that Christ is revealing in our own age. We must find out the message of the hour for our day. But the question now begins, how can we in this voluminous book find out the scripture that pertains to our day? How can we discern, how can any man go in here and decode the mind of God? How can any man know which one applies to his age? No man, the Bible says, you cannot know the mind of God. Because his thoughts are higher than your own thoughts. His ways are higher than your own ways. So you cannot discern his mind. Neither can you discern his thoughts. But God is desirous. To always reveal himself to his people. And so it has to fall down to God to make a way for these things to happen. And so God being desirous for this thing to happen, God has made a way that he will reveal his message of the hour to every individual. Amen? And that way is in Amos 3 verse 7. Brother, if you can help me. All right. Surely... The Lord God will do nothing, but he revealed his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Amen? And so this is the way that God will always bring forth the message of the hour to his people. Because you cannot know the mind of God. And so it takes God, the only way for him to bring his people to himself is to reveal himself and he himself laid down the word for the people. And so how can he do this? He has chosen a vessel called a prophet that he will be able to reveal himself through. Now it is not those men. It is not them that are revealing their own individual self. But it is God that has taken over their vessel. That's why you, we know that Jeremiah was the Christ in his day. Isaiah was the Christ in his day. And so we can boldly say that Brother Branham was a Christ of our own day. 
And so God chooses a vessel called a prophet to reveal himself to the people and to bring forth the word concerning that age. Amen? And so we have to, this is very important, we have to know how the prophets operate. Because I know we, I, went, I went through this in the Sunday school, but it's very important, so I have to go over it again because this is the key to understanding the message. The way God operates with his prophets. And uh, let's read a quote here. Uh, 640120, paragraph 50. Hear what Brother Abraham said. You see, the prophet cannot go by knowledge. He's got to go by inspiration. Inspiration. And when the word of the Lord came to him in the wilderness, in the burning bush, and told him and revealed to him the words that he had spoke to Abraham, and what was he doing? Showing him the written word of that hour, and then called Moses for the work. Amen? Now, notice here what Abraham is saying. The prophet can, does not go by knowledge. It's very important to go that it is not a, a super intellectual understanding of the scripture that the prophet goes by. It's not that. Because with the super intellectual knowledge, you may know what every verse, every chapter says in the Bible. But the ability to apply the one that belongs to your age is not within you. And so, men... Many men in our age have always tried with their intellectual knowledge to apply the full text to a particular situation. But that is not how it works. Because you do not have, and when they try that, they end up twisting the word. They end up dislocating the word. And when you dislocate the word, it has no effect upon you again. And so that's why it takes a prophet by inspiration, not by knowing what Malachi 4 verse 5 says or knowing, quoting it off head, but God taking him and showing him the path that belongs to the certain age. That is how God deals with the prophet. Amen? And so in, in different intellectual schools, for example, I'm going to show us uh, a very perfect example here, and that's in the book of Luke 4, 17 to 19, and Isaiah 61, from verse 1 to 2. Brother, please, if you have, uh, if you have it there, just like I gave you. Man, all right. Man, this is blood, but you can open it in your Bible there, if you can. We'll, we'll start first with Isaiah 61 verse 2. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord had anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He had sent, uh, brother, I like my own. <laughs> can you go back to my, thank you very much. He had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance. Ah, all right, give me yours, brother. Thank you. <laughs> vengeance of our God and the day of vengeance of our God and to comfort all that mourn. Look for. You can just switch to the other one. Yeah. 17. Now, that's a prophecy from Isaiah. Concerning the coming of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, this is the, what we, this is the fulfillment of that. Luke 4, 17. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Esaias. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captive and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Next. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Next. 
And he closed the book. And he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. Next. And he began to say unto them, this day, this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Amen? You just go back to the other diagram. Now, if you are following me exactly in your Bible, in, this is in verse 2 of Isaiah 61 verse 2. Jesus reads from verse 1 and comes over here to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. It's not bad enough, but the next thing there of the Lord, the next thing there is a comma. And the next thing, and the day of vengeance of our God. But Jesus Christ reads to this place and ends with that comma and says, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your eyes. He did not go further to the day of vengeance because at that particular coming that Jesus Christ came, it was not supposed to be fulfilled at his first coming. But what happens all over the world, even in the message by uh, some preachers, is that intellectually, because it is in the same verse, and the only thing that separates it is a comma, you, without the spirit of a prophet in you, will apply the whole verse to a certain age. And that is what the Pharisees did. That is what they used their intellectual knowledge. They understand this book. They knew it from the beginning to the end. They could read it upside down. And so they knew that this particular portion was in the same verse. And when Jesus Christ came, they expected him to proclaim the acceptable year. And they also expected him to be the Roman slayer. To chase the Romans out of the kingdom. To bring vengeance. That was what they expected Jesus Christ to do. But it was not within them. Because they were not prophets. And these little things that happen around here, these little commas, these little exclamation marks, these little semicolons in the scripture means a lot of things. But it takes a prophet to positionally appoint which one belongs to the age. And because Jesus Christ was a chief prophet, he knew which one applied to his first coming. He knew which one would dovetail with all other scriptures. Because this little thing caused the Pharisees, the Sadducees, to reject Jesus Christ. Because they were expecting a Roman slayer. But what they had was a baby. What they had was a very humble man that was pushed around any way they liked. And then they looked at the scripture and said, this could be wrong. But it was not within them to positionally place the word of God in the right path. And so it happened again in, uh, it's all over the Bible if you look at it, but we are talking about our own day. If you can help me with our favorite scripture, Malachi 4, 5, and 6. If we are fast enough. All right. Me. All right. Behold, I send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Let's go down. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, comma, and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Now we see there again, we identify not by our own self, we, didn't, we did not know this by ourselves. A prophet came and showed to us that the first part over there belongs to another age, which is John the Baptist. He was to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. And the next part here, belongs to the prophet of the end time, the Elijah of the Gentiles. And so, with intellectual knowledge, as we see outside, the people argue that this scripture, the whole of this scripture belongs to John the Baptist. That's with the intellectual. But God doesn't deal with the prophet in that way. It is not about intellectual knowledge of the scripture. It is about inspiration. Inspiration to know what? To know what pertains to the hour. And so it is very, very important because without that understanding, 
you will go the intellectual way and you will dislocate the word of God. You will hybrid the word of God. And when you do that, it will not be effective anymore. And so these prophets, as we have, they are not just ordinary men. They are not just people born. We, we know that Brother Brown went to a particular checkup. And it was seen that his senses were not just ordinary. His subconscious and his conscious were close together. But that's not the same with any natural man. So he could dream while he was standing. He could do that, but a natural man cannot do that. So these people are not just ordinary people. God made them to be able to veil Christ to the particular age. Amen? And so when they speak, they do not speak of their own self. They speak the words of Jesus Christ to the people. And so we have been privileged that in our age, God has sent a prophet. And he has come to gather the children of God unto God. Amen? Amen. It's a, a very big topic to put it here. But oneness. God, every time he wants to call his elected, he does something. And so let's see what he does. Paragraph oneness, paragraph 183. Now the coming of the Lord Jesus is so imminent. The coming of judgment. He is calling his elected together in oneness with himself. With the same kind of ministry he had. Now notice what is being said there. He's calling his elected to himself. How? With the same kind of ministry he had. He is calling his elected by revealing himself. We know that this is the age where the Son of Man will be revealed. And he is revealing himself because that is what we are in love with. We are in love with Jesus Christ. That is our husband. It just happened to be that it is veiled in a man. But it is Christ revealing himself to us. And that is why we are attracted to it. We are not following a man. We are not worshipping a man. But we are following vindicated scripture. Because God has to reveal himself. And we see that this sign that has been shown to us is the correct sign. Because it has a voice behind it. And the voice is calling us to meet our husband. And so God, Christ himself, knew that the only thing that will attract the elect is him displaying himself. Not just an ordinary prophet, but Christ veiling himself in the prophet. That is the only thing that is going to attract the believers of the end time. And so that is what Christ did to us. And when he came, he also came with a word. He came with a voice so that whatsoever he does in that age, the people of that age will be like him. But the problem is that many in the first pool of the ministry, when it was signs and wonders on the second pool, many came to visit Christ. They came to see what Christ was doing. But when Jesus Christ, through this end time prophet, began to lay down the word, something striking happened. The people began to say he made a mistake. The people began to say, no, the gifts are all right. They are from God. But the word, there's been a flaw. Bro Brown, with the lack of education, is unable to bring the word. But no, they did not understand that it doesn't work that way. God walks through the vessel of a prophet. Not by education, not by intellectual, but the revealing of the word of God. And so when the prophet speaks in our day, when he speaks and he says something like this should not be like this, many people say, no, he did not understand the scripture. Many people say, for example, prophet, a prophet can give a church order. And with your own intellectual, you may not find it rhyming with a particular Bible verse. 
But if only you will wait to understand what God is showing you with a prophet. A very, very important thing I want to point us to here. Because the word of God, this Bible is very complex. It is only, we only have the reveal mystery because God has sent us a prophet. And in a particular place, in a, uh, Elijah, Elijah's ministry, as our pastor was preaching last Sunday. If you notice, Elijah was sent on a mission to anoint three people. Elisha, Haziel, and Jehu. But Elijah anointed only Elisha and went on to be with the Lord. But with intellectual knowledge, he will want to fault God in that particular place that Elijah did not fulfill what God told him to do. But if you would only understand that the spirit of Elijah was upon Elisha, and it was Elisha that supervised the anointing of this other two, we would have not known that particular place if not that a prophet was given to us. And so, there are junctions in the Bible. There are others that the prophet has given. There are things that he has said we should do. And we must do it. Amen? As my time is running out, let me just read the last quote that I have here. This uh, God hiding himself in simplicity, 106. Listen to every word. Catch it. And if you are taking it on tapes or anything, then you stay right with the tape teaching. Don't say nothing but what the tape says. Just say exactly what the tape says. See? Because some of those things, we are going to understand a whole lot about this now. Why it's misunderstood. See? And you be sure, just say what the tape says. Don't say nothing else. See? Because I don't say that of my own. It's him that says it. You see, and so many times confusion, people raise up and say, well, so and so said it meant so and so. Just leave it the way it is. No FIFO has the authority to say against what the prophet has said. But unfortunately, nowadays, people have taken the words of a FIFO over the words of the prophet. That's idol worshiping. That is not following the message of the hour. The Bible says, the people tried the apostles. How do they try the apostles? They tried them by what the messenger had said. If they are not saying the same thing the messenger said, whether they are Bible scholars or not, they are wrong. And every man on the face of the earth is subject to mistakes. Nobody is God. When you lift up a man into the place of God, you are failing yourself. Because man will make mistakes. I will make mistake and I'm subject to correction. Everybody is subject to correction. But if I make a mistake and God forbid I am gone tomorrow and somebody rises up and says I said this so it must be right. Then you are an idol worshiper. You are not worshiping the true God that we are worshiping. You are not following the message of the hour. Now why I have to go through this boring text is because just not long, I read something about wheat. This wheat that, is, uh, that people do eat. The Bible tells us that that's the stuff of life. But in America right now, the wheat that people used to eat days ago, years ago, and were strong. People are eating it and having allergies. They are becoming sick out of eating wheat. People now are eating eggs and becoming sick. People are eating cucumber. People are eating different natural food that people used to eat those days, but they were strong. But people are eating the same food and they are becoming sick from it. Why? It is because it is no more the original food. It has been hybrided. And so hybriding, Brabham says, brings death. Original is the only thing that brings life. We wonder ourselves why it is that we are not having the same signs, the same power, the same thing, even if we claim that we are following the same word of God that produced the same power. Why? It is because we have hybrided the word of God. We have brought man's ideas. We have removed the provided way of God, which is true, a major prophet, and have invented the teachings of a common man 
a common fivefold in the place of the prophet. Hence, we have all these divisions in the message. Hence, we can never do the greater works because it takes the pure grain to produce life. It takes the pure word of God to bring healing. You may anoint yourself from morning till night, pray from morning till night. If you don't go back to the pure word of God, there can never be results. Proverbs says it's time for the bride to go back to our homeland. What is the homeland? He said God will not bless us if we don't go back to the homeland. The homeland is the message of the hour. And the message of the hour as brought by the prophet. Not a man, but God the great prophet revealing himself to us. Knowing that when we see the manifested Christ, we will be attracted to him. So I asked us a question this evening. If Jeremiah was the Christ of his age, if Isaiah was the Christ of his age, is Brother Branham the Christ of our age? Did the angel that followed Moses have a voice? What is the voice of the pillar of fire in this age? Brother Branham was very bold at one place to say, I am God's voice to you. It was resented by a person in a crowd. He said it again. I am God's voice to you. And this is important if we expect to see the great things that happened in Abraham's ministry. If we expect to follow him because he was that wave shift offering an example of this age. If we expect to be like that, we must go back to the pure, revealed word. Amen? Amen. Let us pray.